Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I am going to be ranking or counting down the uranium stocks in the same peer group that I discussed the other day by how much leverage is intrinsic in the company in the project. Now, as with last time, this is based on the numbers that I have, the estimates I use, but it again could be wrong and is not investment advice. Although I do want to mention again that I do own some stocks that I will mention today up and down the list. Now I do just want to point out that there's nothing inherently great about having a lot of leverage or inherently terrible of having very little. This is just about how the projects are structured in relation to today's market cap. So I just want to be clear that there's nothing wrong with being last on the list or nothing great about being first on the list. It all depends with where you think the price is going to go, what your thoughts are on quality versus leverage to the price. And remember, this is only one measure, only one view, one lens of looking at how much leverage the, the companies have, and it's math based, it's not opinion based. Um, that said, companies have ways of increasing, decreasing, or shifting where the leverage is within the company, um, but I just figured I would make this because I often see some people talking about thinking that the price will go to some number, you know, 150, 200, whatever it is. And then when they say, so I own X, Y, and Z, sometimes they'll point to things that don't really have much leverage and um, maybe they're seeing it differently, um, but maybe I thought this could help. Now, here's a quick reminder of the peer group that I used today. More blah, blah, blah at the end, but let's get right to it. Now coming in at number 10, we have Denison. It has about 15% leverage on the scale that I use, more on that later. Um, excellent cost structure, very high up the quality scale once it gets into production, uh, but the leverage will have to come somewhere else from Wheeler River, perhaps an acquisition, perhaps secondary projects, added debt financing, something like that. But for this list, this measure, Number 10. Coming in at number nine with 21% leverage, next gen energy. So again, excellent cost structure, very hard to knock out of production once it gets in production, uh, but part of that's priced in and there's less leverage than many of the other companies. So coming in at number eight with 23% leverage is Boss Energy. So for now, the project is decently small. The capital is sunk, which a lot of capital is sunk, which means that there's less risk and less capital needed to bring it into production, and it should be fairly simple to get it into cash flow. If they wanted to increase the leverage, that could be done in the enhanced feasibility study if they were to increase um, the size of what's being produced, but for now, 23% leverage. Coming in at number seven, we have Deep Yellow with 26% leverage. So I think that Deep Yellow should probably be looking to make some acquisitions to start with increasing the leverage, perhaps having a secondary project, because either John Borshoff has some work to do to you know, execute or increase the leverage, or if you wanted, I did a calculation for fun, to take the Tumas project to the degree that it went uh, to the returns of last time, it would require a uranium price of $3,578.54 per pound to take the intrinsic value to 1,000 times off the bottom. So I'll bet that it is going to go a different direction and add value, you add leverage in a different way. Coming in at number six with 34% leverage is Global Atomic. Now this is the highest on the list for a, what I would classify as low cost producer, get more to that later. But again, we're not even halfway up the list. Um, so the leverage would either have to come from other projects, DASA extension or something else to increase the leverage or debt, who knows. Um, but I do feel that I should note that the zinc asset actually hurts the leverage. Um, if you were to subtract it and look at just the leverage in the uranium value, it would be closer to 62%, but leverage doesn't work that way, so it's 34%. So 
So coming in at number five, slightly beating out its country rival is Goviex at 36%. In fairness, this would have more leverage if I included Mutanga, but what I did was include in all cases just the primary deposit for all the companies. And I did that because developing Maduella will re likely require equity, which means that you can't really measure um, Mutanga as well, but that could be a substantial additional source of leverage. But f for apples to apples, this is where it stands. Coming in at number four is fission uranium. Now, I was actually a bit surprised that this had landed this high on the list. I always kind of assumed that the uh, low OPEX would make it less levered, but I guess the high CAPEX um, does stuff for the leverage. And so at 41%, it's number four on the list. Coming in at number three on the list is Bannerman at 60% leverage. Note, for the comparisons, I used a Tango 8. Um, the bigger version has more than double the amount of leverage, but for apples to apples comparison, I thought using 8 was better. And so there's still significant leverage here if the CEO can wield it properly. Now coming in at number two on the list is Vimy at 152% leverage. Now this makes it quite the interesting proposition if management can make sure that the market gives them a good price for before going into production. Now Vimy has tons of ability to gain leverage to price. And if I had to guess why we're in this situation, my guess would be that the market thinks that capital might be a bit of a hurdle to get towards production. But once that hurdle is cleared and can be cleared once the price gets high enough, it's very interesting. Now coming in at number one with 161% leverage is Forces. This means if management doesn't rush this towards production, this could, wait, hang on a second, Never mind. Point being, this has tremendous amount of leverage and if the price goes high enough, again, very interesting if it isn't rushed to production by, well, whoever's manage it once they put a management in place. So why these companies again? Well, they are the ones with large resources, sizable potential production with technical reports, PEAs, PFS, DFS, BFS, just no BS. Okay, maybe a little BS. But the point is, they're big, they're in uranium mining locations, and they're not the only companies out there, but they're the ones I chose to include. Now again, note leverage has a lot to do with size, and there are a few bigger US companies that I didn't mention in this list that probably would have been 11, 12. Um, but again, doesn't matter. It's all about what you're looking for. Now also, I mean, I mentioned that this is baseline. This is just looking at the projects, looking at the NPV, and the methodology I used came to the percentage I used was how much should the NPV of the company go up per $5 move in uranium price? And this is purely a rocket ship to infinity standpoint. It's not the only thing that matters. It's just who's the most levered. Also, I mean, the color coding I used, because um, it's kind of relevant. If you have a lower cost company, it's intrinsically less levered. Um, so the green companies whose names are in green can go into production at under 50 bucks, uh, blue between 50 and 65 and purple 65 um, would be needed to advance them towards production and leverage is on top of those prices. Now again, this is for primary asset only because if equity raise is needed to raise a substantial amount of equity to get towards production, well, the degree of that is unknown, so secondary assets are hard to measure. Again, this is just trying to apples to apples comparison of assets out there. Advancing the project to production gives a different leverage, different multiple, and different options. Now, the last thing is, in general, 
explorers are more levered than what you'd find on this list. However, it's impossible to measure for a lot of reasons exactly how levered they are. So that's why I didn't include any. Also note that the names on the list aren't adjusted for how much capital they may need between now and whenever. Now this was for informational purposes, not investment advice. I say that a lot, but it's really accurate. Thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed and until next time, have a great day.